welcome back. Uh, so, now we have f we will assume that continuous and has moderate decay. Of course, then this is integrable as we have seen uh, earlier and uh, then now we have characters. Therefore, we can now define Fourier transform. So, now the characters are e to the power 2 pi i j x for j belongs to or this is a function on r. Therefore, I will write j dot j belongs to r. So, we have analogously defined a fact of xi for xi belongs to r integral minus infinity to infinity f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i xi x dx. Now, easily one can see that mod of f hat of xi if I am using the triangle inequality under the integral, then this would be lesser equal to minus infinity to infinity mod of f of x dx. Now, this we know that is a finite number lesser equal to some constant a which is less than infinity. Therefore, first observation for us that f hat is bounded. That is our first observation. Now, the first thing what we had proved there is something called a riemann lebesgue lemma. So, now here do we have the analog of riemann lebesgue lemma. As a matter of fact, we have. So, now this is the theorem, what we call the Riemann if f is like continuous and moderate decay. then f hat is also continuous and second is that f hat of xi this goes to 0 as mod xi goes to infinity. Just like in the case of the Fourier series if we have a Riemann integrable 2 pi periodic Riemann integrable function, then the Fourier coefficient will go to 0 as mod n goes to infinity. So, the proof will ideally follow the same idea what we have employed there. So, this is uh, integral minus infinity to infinity f of x minus 1 by 2 j e to the power minus 2 pi i j x. This for j not equal to 0. So, because we are interested in j mod j goes to infinity. So, we are not bothered about j is equal to 0. So, for large j we are interested. So, we can talk about 1 over 2 j. Now, if I make a change of variable what we have seen earlier, this is f of x and then e to the power minus 2 pi i j, then this one becomes x plus 1 by 2 j dx. This is equal to minus infinity to infinity f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x into e to the power minus pi 
i d x 1 by 2 j will get cancelled e to the power minus pi i is negative 1. So, this is minus uh, f of x which is equal to minus of f hat of xi. So, therefore, twice f hat of xi this is equal to integral minus infinity to infinity f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx and minus f hat of j is minus of this. Therefore, this is minus infinity to infinity f of x minus 1 by 2 j e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx. Now, this is equal to minus infinity to infinity f of x minus f of x minus 1 by 2 j e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx. Now, again, so this minus uh, infinity to infinity is we can take for minus n to n and f is a continuous function therefore, uniformly continuous on a finite interval then and if mod xi goes to infinity then this becomes 1 by 2 to the 1 by 2 xi this goes to 0 as mod xi goes to infinity. So, therefore, we can appeal to the continuity part of f such that in the finite interval this is less than epsilon like our earlier argument and so this we can say that this converges to 0 as mod xi goes to infinity because tail part will always be less and then on minus n to n we will appeal to the continuity of f and our 1 over 2 j is very small because j is large. So, we get the smallness overall. So, this what we have got uh, is uh, uh, the Fourier transform, the riemann lebesgue lemma. So, what it says is that it is bounded. So, now is it, uh, I mean one can ask that if f has a moderate decay, is f hat going to have moderate decay because finally, you know I mean uh, what we want that if we would be chasing for inversion formula or Percival identity. Now, to get the inversion formula then we have to write integral minus infinity to infinity f hat of xi and something. Now, that must be integrable a priori we have no idea that whether this f hat is going to be integrable or not. What we have seen is that only f hat is bounded. Now, let us see that we are giving a moderate decay then, uh, then f hat may not have a moderate decay. However, if we put the condition that if f is c 1 that means, uh, if that means we take f and f prime both continuous and moderate decay. Suppose, we are imposing the condition on the f prime which also has moderate decay that is integrable in our sense. So, uh, then let us look at f hat of xi. f hat of xi, this is going to be equal to, uh, let us say, limit n goes to infinity minus n to n 
f of x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx this now this part is this is the integral uh, so i will take suppose j is not equal to 0 then this is f of x into e to the power minus 2 pi i j x by minus 2 pi i j this is minus n to n then minus minus plus 1 by 2 pi i j integral minus n to n f prime of x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x by parts. Now, as you can see that uh, f has a moderate decay therefore, for large n when we are taking therefore, f uh, this is uh, goes to f towards the infinity has to go to 0 because mod of f of x is lesser equal to some constant by 1 plus x square. So, then the first part will go to 0 and the second part f prime we are assuming that it is integrable. So, this we can write it as 1 by 2 pi i j minus infinity to infinity f prime of x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx. Now, if we push the mod here, so what we get that f hat of xi is lesser equal to some constant by mod xi and this the constant of course, is uh, the integral over mod of f prime. So, this is no more dependent on xi. So, now if we give certain smoothness on our function f, then we see that we are getting some decay. So, just with once differentiable and f prime has is integrable, then what we are going to get that f hat has a decay like 1 over mod xi. But we if we want to get mod xi square kind of the decay, then uh, if we do take f to be twice differentiable and double derivative as also integrable in our sense, then by doing time and again this another uh, integration by parts to this is going to give us we will get a factor of 1 by uh, 2 pi again. So, if let us note it down f belongs to C 2 with de moderate decay on f f prime f double prime then what we can see is that mod of f at of xi is lesser equal to some constants by mod of j square away from the origin. So, we are getting giving a differentiability on f we are capturing some decay on f hat. Uh, so, this constant will be so, uh, the uh, modulus of f double prime of x integral and 1 over 4 pi square. Okay. So, in general if f is in C n and n times differentiable and all those f k moderate decay k is equal to 0 to uh, n then what we get mod of f hat of xi 
is lesser equal to some constant times mod xi to the power n for large n. Okay, so, that is what we have seen. So, now let us uh, to do some Fourier analysis, let us try to compute some Fourier transform of uh, uh, integrable function. As you can see that uh, we have assumed continuity for our purpose uh, to prove certain things and all. But to define the Fourier transform, what essentially what we need is that the mod f is integrable minus infinity to infinity mod of f of x. So, remark to define Fourier transform, we need is finite, that is all what we need. Then we can define f at of xi is integral minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx. So, in this context, so let us do some example. Let f of x, this is equal to indicator function of minus 1 to 1 x. So, therefore, this is integrable function uh, and f hat of xi then would be equal to minus 1 to 1 e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx. So, this is equal to if j is equal to 0, then what we are going to get this is equal to 2 and if j is not equal to 0, then this is e to the power minus 2 pi i j x by minus 2 pi i j from minus 1 to 1. Obviously, we know what this quantity is. So, this is going to be I can erase this now and I can write this. This is sin 2 pi z i by pi j. Okay, if j is not equal to 0. So, that is 1. Then the second thing, let us try to do it for a continuous function. Let f of x, this is equal to 1 minus mod x, if mod x is lesser equal to 1, 0 otherwise. So, this is a continuous function, because this function will look like at 1 minus 1 and 0 here, 0 here. So, this is a continuous function. So, now if we would compute the f hat of xi. So, this is the function is now supported on minus 1 to 1. So, rest of the integral is going to vanish. So, now this is what we need to compute. Okay. So, minus 1 to 0, then uh, 1 plus x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x plus 0 to 1, 1 minus of x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx. So, this if I we are going to combine this two, so this is going to be nothing but 0 to 1. 
So, if you just compute this two integral as you can see that x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x if we make a change of variable then this is going to get 0 to 1, 1 minus of x e to the power 2 pi i j x dx and, uh, and this is plus 0 to 1, 1 minus of x e to the power minus 2 pi i j x dx. So, if you do then what you are going to get is that the integral 0 to 1 twice 0 to 1, 1 minus of x cos 2 pi j x dx. Now, you apply integration by parts. So, once you apply the integration by parts, then by computing, if we complete the uh, computation, then what you are going to get that f hat of xi, this is equal to sin pi xi by pi xi whole square if xi not equal to 0. That is a very easy computation as you can see that uh, the first one would be twice uh, cos 2 pi xi x by x evaluated at 0 and 1 uh, and integral is sin. So, that is going to vanish then 1 minus of x that is going to vanish and then in the other part if you are doing this then uh, derivative of this is sin 2 pi j x by 2 pi j and the derivative is minus of 1. So, which you are going to get in the terms of the cos and then 1 minus. So, this will actually give you uh, the 1 minus uh, cos 2 pi j that is 1 minus cos 2 theta that is 2 sin square theta. So, just by completing this argument you will see that f hat of xi is equal to sin pi xi by pi pi xi whole square sin square pi xi by pi square j square. So, now so essentially what uh, what we observed with the similar uh, I mean the computation and the earlier observation. So, uh, if uh, we are taking a function uh, having some good decay uh, and they are differentiable, uh, then the Fourier transform because of the differentiability we are producing certain decay and then the Fourier transform will uh, uh, is well behaved. Uh, so, to see that class of function, so before introducing that class of function, let me give you one example which is very important. Now, what you define f of x, this is equal to e to the power minus 1 by x minus or rather minus 1 by x into x minus 1. If x is in 0 and 1 and 0 otherwise, that what we see is that uh, this is 0 here and so, we know that e to the power minus 1 over x square that is uh, differentiable at 0 and uh, so hence what we get some function like something like this. So, this is a function f is infinitely many times differentiable and has compact support so this class what 
generally it is denoted by C C infinity of R. So, this of course, has moderate decay and so on and so forth and it is infinitely differentiable. Therefore, the f hat the Fourier transform is going to have good decay. So, at least it has uh, the, uh, polynomial decay in the sense that if you heat the function with a polynomial then again that is going to be under our control. So, now in the next lecture what we would will be doing is uh, to find an appropriate space in which we will have a very nice uh, Fourier analysis result that is in the next lecture. Thank you.